If you're a dog mom looking to brighten up your desk, today I'll be sharing how you can easily recreate this inspirational painting, showing step by step how to draw and paint each part, so even if you're a beginner, you can do this too. The first step is to draw two lines. One line will be one inch away from the top border, and the second three fourths of an inch from the bottom border. Then we'll draw the silhouettes within the space. The great thing about silhouettes is that it gives you the freedom to manipulate the human body without concerns for the anatomy. All you need is to have the main body parts outlined. For the dog, you want to focus on the basic shape. Draw a half circle and a triangle nose, and closing off the space with an egg or avocado shape. Then draw the body about twice the size as the front, making triangles for the legs, ensuring that the back leg is about a quarter of an inch from the bottom line for depth. Then drawing the outline for the ears and the face. To make the dress, we'll be use the silhouette to flare out the skirt from the legs. So that will be your guideline. Then erasing the legs within the dress area. For the sleeves, we will use the arms to know when to flare out. Making the basic outlines first and then the inside of the trim. After erasing the arms within the sleeves, we'll focus on the hands. Making the top of the hand and thumb only. Try not to get too caught up on the other fingers since hands and feet are the hardest body parts to draw in general. Then to make the neck lapel, extend the outline from the chest slightly beyond the shoulders. For the purse, draw a line across the hand diagonally making an end shape. Drawing a back shape that you like just like I did a potato with the line across with the heart in the middle. For the hat, about two thirds from your silhouette's head, draw a slight curve downwards and make the tops slightly oversized. Drawing the earrings right under the hat. For the sky, start about one third from the top edge and make three curves, each slightly smaller than the next. Then on that edge, it would be your third Draw a horizontal line for your ocean. About half an inch below it, draw a stripe to create contrast, making a fluid line below for the sand, as if the waves were sliding up within the ocean current. Once you have your basic shapes, go back and add all of the details you want to paint, such as this border to give your clouds some extra depth, and adding accessories such as a scarf for movement. For the lettering, you can free write or measure it all so your letters are evenly distributed. As a tip, if you want to sketch the letters ahead of time and you're making them in a thick style, draw the outside first to ensure that it will all fit in the space and style that you want. After you finish, grab your eraser on its longest side and slightly pass it over your paper. It should be softly grazing it so there shouldn't be any pressure or any flying eraser specks. This will be the key to lighten up the pencil marks without fully erasing. Once you're ready, grab a cup of clean water. It's essential that you keep your water clean to ensure you don't alter the colors since we will be adding a layer of water before the colors for a few of these areas. Do your best not to add water past the edges of the area you intend to paint. Switching the brushes as needed for precision. Only adding the water for one color at a time. Please don't try to multitask. This technique is going to help it look even. As you add color, spread it across using the water, taking your time not to wipe the water away from any portion of the paper since it will lead to blushes. If it happens though, just remember that water is your friend and will help soften it while wet by just applying one dot of water in the bare areas. Add in color one dab at a time until you're satisfied with it. Repeating the same technique of clean water plus color dabbling after each color dries completely. For small sections where pre-wetting the paper is not possible, add the color while your brush is wet. If it looks darker than the rest, remove a little bit of color by using a paper napkin to absorb some of it. As you're adding the color, add at the center and then spread towards the edges, 
so you can have greater control and don't accidentally go into another area. While you see the paint start to dry in some sections, if you're not liking the color 100%, use your now dryish brush to pick up some of the paint. Adding to the lighter areas, because this will allow you to evade reapplying water or use color directly from the palette since it's going to make it too dark all as well, that's what you're going for. As you begin painting the smaller parts, such as the dress, keep in mind that we will be adding a dark ink outline during our final steps. So if you have some edges that are not looking their best, don't stress over it. We can fix the mistake later on with don't fake it till you make it magic. If you're feeling too excited to wait until everything dries and you want to make progress in another color, choose an area that is not touching any other wet sections, such as I did with the scarf. And as a tip, don't forget to use both colors for the details, it'll give you some extra personality and make it pop out even more. And also, don't hesitate to add even more details as you're painting, as long as the paint is dry or you haven't painted yet, you're safe. When adding darker shades, be extremely careful since dark can only be fixed with darker shades or acrylics. As you start painting the miniature details, if you are a beginner, take a deep breath in and out before setting the brush down on the paper. And if you feel your hand about to start shaking, take it off the paper and breathe again. This part can be intimidating, but it is doable with lots of patience. Keep in mind that in my example, I'm working on a 5x7 piece of paper, so if you're able to make it larger, do it and hang it on your wall because it will save you a lot of stress. Practice making slow, small strokes. One of the best things about watercolor is that as long as it's wet, you can easily manipulate the outcome. This gold that I'm using will be the same as the sand because at the end, cohesiveness is key to have it look more fancy and more upscale. And if at any point in the process you realize you missed the spot, don't panic. Just follow the same technique you use for the other already dry sections and paint it. No one needs to know. Well, unless you're like me and you're trying to show how it was made, where omitting the mistake seems really wrong because it gives a false sense of something's easy when it's not. So if you stick around and subscribe, note that honesty is big for my mom and I. So we will admit to our errors so you know how to prevent them. Crafting and painting should give you joy and always be made with love. And the result of what you can show off is just that, something to look at. How you feel during the process is what matters. As you explore the techniques we're using, really rely on the water to make most of the work. For any light colored accents, erase the pencil lines first so they don't get stuck in the paint forever. And as you prepare to paint skin, it will be important to erase the pencil marks. If you can't because the background colors are touching already, don't worry, remember that there will be a magical outline later. As you add your flesh color, depending on how light or dark you made the background, it might look like it's blending in, like mine did. But as long as you keep your edges well defined, the difference will be visible once it dries. And if you try to layer other shades on top of the painted area, make sure you don't let your brush rub the paint off. It should be more like dropping in some water. And then dropping the paint only using the tip of the brush to spread it in the water, not the paper. If you don't, then this is what's going to happen. If it does occur though, just wait until it all dries and repaint the section. For the ocean, if you want to play it with different shades of blue, you can always preemptively water down the color on the side so you know exactly what the shade will look like when applied. After you finish adding all of the colors, you're ready for the grays and blacks. I love using ink because it creates more contrast and drama instead of a black watercolor but just use whatever you have at hand. With ink, you can still use the same technique of water first, but you need a lot less, so be sure to squeeze out as much ink as possible before adding it to the paper. And then cleaning your brush and leaving it wet with some water to help spread it in the area you want it in. For the head, work with the leftover color on your brush and the water. This will be your lightest area, so you don't want to add ink directly. Then, using that same wet brush, color the bottom right corner of the ear. 
and add water to fill in the rest of the ear section. As you start using the pure black ink for the details and outline, be vigilant of how much ink your brush is holding. If you don't have a drop of ink at the tip, use this as an opportunity to paint the outline. But if you do have an excess of ink though, paint the middle of the area first and then spread it towards the edges. If you're feeling nervous, detach yourself from the painting by flipping it upside down and just concentrating on filling in the space. Look at it as a shape and not as a whole. Layering on as needed to create the shade that you want. For the lettering, the easiest way I found to paint them was by doing a watery layer first and then adding the pure ink on top and spreading it. This process helps make it so that it all looks the same shade of black instead of having streaks of different intensities. As you continue working on your painting, you will start to notice areas that dried imperfectly, such as mine did around the face. This was created by the paper not being completely leveled. So the ink, which is heavier than watercolor, puddled to the corners. Other than having a perfectly flat surface, you can prevent this from happening by setting a timer for every two minutes to spread out the ink evenly as it dries so that it doesn't get those blotches. When painting areas such as the tail, where you'd want a bit of texture for the curly hair of the poodle, paint in small streaks. Then for the bottom lettering, Add the ink around the letter, keeping in mind that this is a very tedious task. Mistakes are made easily. To make it easier on yourself, paint the bottom and top borders so you know where the edges of the letter should be. It will save you some frustrations on them being uneven in size. And then only paint the outside outline of your letters. I really encourage you to follow these lettering tips so you don't end up with a hot mess of letters like I did. After you do your outlines, fill in the space between the letters. And if at any point you slip up like I did with my H and T, still add the details to the good letters. And then once everything is done, you can use a white acrylic pen or paint to fix the mistake. And create more definition like I did. Then, once you're ready to paint more accessory details, find a place where a dot can easily roll off to improve your brush control. Low and steady really is key. The closer you are to the end, the more satisfying it becomes. For these, don't be afraid of using the paint you already put on the paper to make the tones even, just like I did for the purse color and straps along with the leftover for the earring. Now, for the magical outline that I've been mentioning that's going to tie everything together, allow yourself to be comfortable with the movement of the brush, following the curves you've already made by adding the colors side to side. Using it as a method of hiding the imperfections, don't try to make them super thick, but give yourself some creative leniency on it. Except for the body, because those lines you do want to keep as slim as possible for a more realistic look. Don't be shy or afraid of making small lines that match up to each other to create this effect. This painting, as simplistic as it looks, it does have a lot of steps and it can be time consuming, but it's fun, cute, and positive. So enjoy the last details on it. Don't feel pressured by how fast it looks like I've painted this. In reality, it took me about two and a half hours to complete this artwork. So if you appreciate it, if you've enjoyed the process or maybe even learned something, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and comment below. I love sharing and teaching how to make things that we see in stores that make us happy, also affordable. But being a small channel with my mom is always hard to know what to do. And I tend to make most of my things related to dogs or cats, but I'm not really sure how much people actually enjoy it. Because I'm not exactly sure how many people are that much in love with their four-legged little ones. Now, before I keep rambling on my pet parenthood, let's continue back to the painting tips. Now, when you're outlining the scarf, try not to make the outline too heavy. Remember that these are usually lightweight and they represent movement. 
After you finish outlining everything, you can stop. Your design doesn't need a face. The next part of the painting, you could potentially ruin everything. So think about it before you do it. If you're okay with the potential risk and decide to move forward, paint the eyes. But don't get too caught up on the details, trying to make them look too realistic. As you can see, there's a lot of hesitation in my hand. When this happens, I just keep on going over the air how I'm going to move my hand. And then, once it feels like a natural movement, then I put my brush on paper. For the woman, I did a line with the circle, and for the dog, I only did a line. Once I accomplished that, my confidence went up, so I finished adding the details to the purse, sleeve fuzz, and doggy present along with some slight details to the dog so I matched the human's outline and there was more movement in the poodle's walking. And with that, we're done and ready to move on to our next painting, which if you'd like to learn how to draw a paw print, go ahead and watch this video right here.